Hello, everybody. Hope you're all right. It's Friday night. Look. What's that tune again? It's uh, Equinox Part 5, isn't it? Uh, Jean-Michel Jarre. Look, I'm using my green screen, but it doesn't work very well. Um, let's try and fix it a little bit. Green screen. Let's have a look. There's the fade. Well, look, I can make it go away, or that's probably the sweet spot there. Whoa! Whoa! I'm Dr. Balls, my mouth. How's that? It's just about all right. I've tried to use the green screen before. Look, I can have a brick wall. Ha ha ha. I can be in my front room. Quite like that. But it's a bit, a bit weird. Dr. Balls pub quiz. 7 p.m. That's okay. But the wheel is good. I'm a little bit quizzed out. Uh, I did Radio Scotland this morning. Oh, I'm just going to turn this green screen off. It doesn't work that way. It works really well on Zoom. Um, but uh, on this system, not so much. I'll put the fade down a little bit. Make it see that's it. You either lose part of the background or whoa. Ah, forget it. Turn it off. Okay. Uh yeah, a little bit quizzed out. Uh I did um Radio Scotland this morning, back on there. Fifty five points. If you Saw any of the repeatal quizzes that was two months ago? It's the same format. First question is worth one point, second question worth two points, so on. I ask the presenter of the radio show the questions, and he tries to get them right, and you try to beat the <clears throat> the uh, the guy, Stephen Jardin. He's called. That's what I was just describing. Yeah, I was just doing a little quiz this morning. I'm going to be on again next week, next Thursday. A uh, Christmas quiz. It's just 10 minutes after Popmaster, quarter to 11, but on Radio Scotland. Okay, um, and then after that, I've done three Zoom quizzes this afternoon, so I've been quizzing pretty much uh, constantly. Anyway, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, look, you can even hear that down in England, ladies and gentlemen. Radio Scotland goes to England. Fantastic. Right, hello, everybody. Hello, Despatch. Hello, Kirsten. Uh, hello, Roddy. Hello, Noodle Doodles. Uh, hello, Robin. Hello, Michael. Hello, Leslie. Uh, Gary. Nah, that's that's the old wheel. You're not on the wheel already. That's the old wheel. That's an old wheel. Uh, Peaky Five Fairs. The bonnet are back. Back in the bonnet. Tick biscuits are here. All the way from the Glasgow. The Big G, Deniston. The Dream Town. Deniston, Dreams Town. Dreams come true in Deniston. That should be their civic slogan. Through there, I reckon. Hello, Marion. Hello, Chris. Hello, Jenny. Quarantini. Yeah, everyone's here. Good stuff. Right. Hello. I'm Dr. Paul. If you've never been here before, it's uh, it's just me doing a quiz. That's it. There's <laughs> really not much more to it than that. Uh, there are some prizes, but I honestly can't for the life of me remember what the prizes are. Uh, tonight, I've been a little bit busy. In fact, before I start sharing this, I better get rid of all the potential prizes that I'm not giving away. Am I doing socks tonight? Yeah, I'm doing socks tonight. Right, okay. You can win socks. I know you like to know what you can win. You can win socks and other prizes, okay? And uh, let me just... Well, here we go. This is me making up the... Uh... PowerPoint on the hoof. Had no time. You can win Bodgers as well. The world's greatest and most foul mouthed uh, fridge magnet set. It's two minutes past seven, so I better start talking about the quiz. Hello, Mr. Doyle. Hello, Veronica. Hello, Graham S. Mr. Scotland. S is for Scotland. Imagine being called Mr. Scotland. 
That's pretty cool. That's Grey MS there. Buona sera, mamma mia. Va bene. And uh, Phil Barrymore's first team here tonight. Great stuff. Edinburgh, Huddersfield, New York, Las Vegas. Right. I don't think I've got any background music on, and I know you love it. So I'm just going to get some background music on uh, before I get going. Q Marion. Marion's going to make a comment now about how she really does not like background music. Uh, da, 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 da. Live stream audio round. No, live stream. That's what I want. Okay, right. And I need to turn the volume down on this thing so that it is background music and it's not ah! music. Okay, right. I think I'm ready. From the beginning, that's what we want. Okay, now it's time to share this. I wish Zoom worked like this. This works a lot better. I don't really mind about the green screen not being that great. Mind you, it's different. So I've been doing loads of Zooms this week. Pretty good. I'm still uh, hiring myself out to do Zoom quizzes next week. Uh, <clears throat> if you want to bag me up for that. Anyway, live quiz starts soon. That's what we want to talk about just now. It's four minutes past. So I need to huck, 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 huck. hurry up because I like to hit the first question at five past. How you play is you answer the question, you mark yourself every round, and then you don't shout out answers in the chat. That's what you do. Last time we played, I don't have, I still haven't done the scores. I honestly, I've hardly slept this week. Um, Zoom quiz, £95. Hire me, it's great fun. Uh, Deadpool, you need to get your Deadpools in for January before the end of December. Talk about that later. Prizes tonight. Sock Splash, number one sock company. Um, just started a young company, a brand new company in 2020. Um, young people as well, making a go of it in the sock world. And uh, tonight they're giving you these rock and roll seahorse socks. Great. You can win those and you can win Bojos as well. And, uh, less said about that, the better. Right, okay. Same letter round. <laughs> We've done it. It's five past. Uh, you know how the same letter round works. I'm going to ask you five questions. All the answers start with the same letter of the alphabet. Don't shout out in the chat. Just write them down and then after each round, I'll tell you the uh, <clears throat> the answers. You can do your own marking. Thanks for the like. Whoever's on Facebook and gave me the like. Give me a like, folks. That helps as well. Cheers. Let's go. Right, fictional submarines. Same letter round. Question number one. In the Jules Verne novel, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, what is the name of Captain Nemo's submarine? Okay, so what's the name of the submarine that Captain Nemo drives about under the sea? In 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne. Name of the boat. Number two. Remember, all five answers start with the same letter. That's the big clue. Question number two. Which line of the London Underground is represented by the colour black on the tube map? On the underground map for London, uh, which colour did they use? No, sorry. What's the name of the line uh, that's shown by the colour black? That's what I mean. Uh, number three, title of a film, 2003 film starring Heath Ledger in the title role. It's about an Australian outlaw, a, a real-life character played by Heath Ledger in a 2003 film. Um, what's the name of that film and the name of the, the guy he plays? Same thing. Uh, number four, Greek gods. In Greek mythology, ambrosia was the food of the gods. What was their drink? It's not creamed rice. It's ambrosia, is is different stuff. Uh, but what was their drink? What was the drink of the gods in Greek mythology? And the last one in this first round, where all the answers start with the same letter of the alphabet. I know Mum's going to get this one right because it's her favourite guy. Which American singer scored seventies chart hits with songs like "Cracklin' Rosie," "Sweet Caroline," and "Forever in Blue Jeans." So that's not too obscure ones. Fairly major hits for that singer. Who is the singer? Cracklin' Rosie, Sweet Caroline, and Forever in Blue Jeans. Yeah. Okay. So tell me when you're ready. But in the meantime, 
I'm just going to go back over this, show you the answers. Um, no, ask you the questions one more time. That's what I mean. I'm getting confused. <laughs> I had my head scrambled by all this quiz. Right, 20,000 leagues under the sea. What's the name of the submarine? Number two, which line is black on the underground map of London? Number three, what's the film? 2003 Heath Ledger is the title role. Food of the Gods is Ambrosia. What is their drink? And uh, who sung those? Cracklin' Rosie, Sweet Caroline, and Forever in Blue Jeans. Right, you tell me when you're ready. Hazel says that the beer from Cross Borders arrived yesterday. Thank you. Yes, Cross Borders uh, sponsor our Monday quiz. And that's good news. Beer for Hazel. Was that Monday just gone? No, it was two Mondays ago, wasn't it? So it's just turned up. That's good. Or was it this week? I was so mixed up this week. There's Mum. She's seen the guy at number five twice live. Take that, folks. Was it the New Orleans Jazz Festival? Is that what you saw? Golden Girls are ready. Welcome back. Golden Girls. Mr. Doyle's ready. Chameleons are ready. Noodle Doodles are ready. Uh, Chris is ready. Roddy's ready. Right? You're all ready. You're all ready, 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 ready for this. Let's get some answers for you. So, same letter round answers. First of all, I want to know, did you get a letter? I'm sure you did. Letter. Nah. But nay bother. Nay bother, Nicola. Uh, right, here we go. Here are, the, here are the answers. He scored two points for a right answer. So, 20,000 leagues under the sea. Captain Nemo's the guy, and he is sailing around in the Nautilus. Nautilus is the right answer. There's a picture. I think that's from the original novel, that image. There it is, all the fish getting out of the way. Watch out, mates. Submarine. Number two, uh, black line on the London Underground map is the Northern Line. Northern Line goes from south to north. Goes through Brixton. I know that. Australian uh, film, or actually, I don't. Uh, it's not necessarily Australian film, but it's about an Australian outlaw. Two thousand three, Heath Ledger plays Ned Kelly. Ned Kelly is correct. There he is, in the film. He, he was the one with a sort of bucket iron mask and shoot out and stuff like that. That's pretty much all I know about him. Uh, Greek mythology, Ambrosia was the food of the gods. What was their drink? It's nectar. Nectar. Sparked off a bit of uh, Northern Line nostalgia going on in the chat. I see that. Jacqueline Rosie, Sweet Caroline, Forever in Blue Jeans. It's your man. It's Neil Diamond. There he is. Fantastic. Great singer. I've never heard, heard of him being referred to as the Jewish Elvis, but there you go. I was reading about his film the other day, The Jazz Singer, which I kind of know about, but I've never seen. I was thinking to myself, I need to see that. Right. 10 out of 10 if you got all the answers right. It's two points per answer, but you add points. You add two points if you're uh, somebody on your team as a subscriber to YouTube. You add plus one if somebody has done a share, and by that I mean going down there, hitting the button that says share, and sharing it to the world, and causing huge virality, and getting the numbers up. You never know. Uh, and you add one if it's your birthday, which it probably isn't your birthday. No, no he's not, as, not as far as I know anyway. No, I, I'm, not a, I'm not that type of diamond. I'm a kind of made up diamond. That's right, they're ever in blue jeans. Baby, money talks. Na, 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 na. Need to get some uh, Neil Diamond on the old Kazula Palooza. There's the answers all together. Nautilus, Northern Line, Ned Kelly, Nectar, Neil Diamond. Did he? Is that an old film? Is that a 60s version? So what we got, Chameleon's got 13, Bill got 13, Marion's got 13, Margaret Ann's got 13, the fists straight in there.
And uh, what else we got? 13 for Mum. Nice one. Yes. Yeah. I, I did it the other way around tonight. Usually question number five is a tricky one, but I think it was maybe one of the easier ones. Number five, so... Maybe that's the way it worked. Fell into place after you got the keystone. Okay. Yes. Right, all will film. Yeah. Right, I'm going to move on. Scapegoats. That's a good name for a team. Escape goats. I don't really know what it means. Does it mean something? Or is it just the word escape and the word goats? It feels like it means something, but it's great. It's mysterious. You know? Pedestrian Crossing got 13. Spaghetti Haggis got 10 out of 10. All right. Well, 10 points anyway. Veronica's got 13. Right. Decent start for most of you. Let's carry on. Let's get straight into the second round. Let's try and get the quiz nice and brisk tonight. Um, actually, you know what? Uh, let's do... No, I'll think of a question in a minute, right, to get people on the wheel. I'm really not set up tonight. Everything's going to be fine. I need to get the wheel set up, first of all. Get the wheel on. Right. Because if you don't know, like, to win the prizes, uh, you have to get on the wheel of names. And there are various ways to do that. None of them is scoring high points in the quiz. That's The quiz part is just for fun. You know what I mean? But if there's questions, if I ask a question, let's let's find something. Oh, let's just do a let's just do an London Underground question. What color is uh, the metro? No. What color is the circle line? First one to type the answer in for that. We'll get on the wheel. We'll start off with a an easy trivia question to get yourself on the wheel. It's just whoever types in the answer first. What color is the the circle line on the London Underground map? The official map. Um, I'm sure you've all typed the answer, but it's just not quite come through yet because it's a fairly basic question. Yeah, loads of you just appeared all at once there. There we go. It's uh, Yellow is the right answer, of course, but who was first to put it? It was Alison from Noodle Doodles. Hooray! Alison Noodle Doodles, you are the first person on the wheel. Okay. No, I'm all right. I'm cool. I'm just um, slightly discombobulated. Right, pitch around. Here we go. Um, five pictures. Just give, give us the answers, all right? Or don't shout them out, but just uh, write them down. Pitch around. Right, network. Uh, what are the three letters that make the name of this American broadcasting network and media company? They use this logo that you can see. So there's three three letters underneath that. What are what are the three letters? Yeah, Alison's on the wheel. She's pleased about it. Good stuff. Ah, some wrong answers as well. People saying green. Green's the district line. I know these. I love the tube map. I think it's beautiful. Red is the central line. Purple was kind of what I nearly asked. I nearly said the metropolitan line, but you could say magenta or pink or purple and sort of be right. So just to make it certain, I went for circle. A couple of people said blue. Light blues of Victoria, dark blues of Piccadilly. I know this stuff. I used to have a board game where you could go around the London Underground, you know, you had to move around it, change stations, roll dice, pick cards, that sort of thing. It's quite good. Uh, anyway, number two, fashion pair. Uh, the first names of this fashion team are Domenico and Stefano, uh, but what are their more famous surnames? So you know them by their surnames. What are their surnames and therefore the name of their company? Their first names are Domenico and Stefano. Hazard a wild guess that they might be Italian. Number three, music uh, question. Which artist recorded this album released in 1991 with a classic cover and a high, a very uh, big selling record Blockbuster American band okay which American band recorded this classic album in 1991 that'll be an easy one for lots of you because you might have bought it at the time uh, number four is also 
back in the 90s. Uh, this woman was a top tennis star back in the 90s. She won five different Grand Slam titles, Grand Slam tournament titles in the 90s. But what nationality is she? I don't need to know her name. you just got to guess what country she was from. So what what's the nationality of that tennis player? Right. See, I love the London Underground, but I don't think I would like a London Underground duvet set. I think I'd mess with my mind. Too many straight lines. It's like bed is a place to lie down and be relaxed. I don't find the London Underground tube map relaxing. It's beautiful. <laughs> uh, Bill's done it again. Look, I taught my dog to, dog to play the trumpet on the underground. He went from barking to tooting in 30 minutes. Oh, God, that's so corny and so cheesy, and yet it makes me laugh. So, Bill, you're on the wheel. Well, it says Therese, but it's Bill. <laughs> hey, look at this. Cute furry thing. But, what is it? Is it a real animal? Or is it a puppet from a kid's TV show? So, uh, what type of thing is that? Is it our genuine, real, actual animal? Or is it a puppet from a kid's TV show? All right. That is the five picture questions. You let me know when you're ready for the answers. I'm going to just run these past you one more time. Uh, what's the network? American Broadcasting Network and Media Company. Use this logo. Three letters is what you're looking for. Come to, what's their surname? So that's Domenico and Stefano. What's their more famous surnames? Oh, you're from, uh, you're from Tooting. Move to the northwest. Tooting is, was South London, is it? One of the names, Tooting Beck. I like that name. I like the names in the London Underground. They sound kind of mysterious. I was born in London, but never lived there, really. So it's kind of got a sort of spooky origin thing for me, London. I, I'm from there, but I know nothing about it, you know. Uh, who recorded the album 1991? What nationality is this tennis player? She was big in the 90s. Five Grand Slam victories in the 90s. What's her nationality? And real or fake? I or no? Actual animal or just a puppet? You all ready? Noodles are ready. Lumpy gravy are ready. Mr. Burney is here. Hello, Andrew. Is ready. Janie Nomsey. Mum, Jonathan, I don't know, because I'm live. I'm I'm in my own space. If it's lagging for anyone else, up in Tooting called the Tequila Mockingbird. <laughs> That's good. That's like a super standard uh, pub quiz team name. It's right up there with uh, Quizlamic State. Right, let's get the answers on. Two points for these. Here we go. Um, what are the three letters that make up the name of this uh, corporation broadcasting network? It is NBC. NBC is the correct answer. Now, I'm guessing, I'm going to quickly look this up. I'm guessing that NBC stood for uh, National Broadcasting company or corporation yeah national broadcasting company nbc right two points for that uh domenico and stefano dolce and gabbana they are dolce and gabbana Right, here's a here's a trivia question to get your name on the wheel. Uh, what city in Italy is the HQ of Dolce & Gabbana in? First person to put a correct answer in the chat gets on the wheel of names and uh, potentially ends up winning stuff later on. So which, uh, 
Which city is the Dolce & Gabbana Empire based out of? Which city is their HQ? Just looked this up a second ago. Milan is correct. It's the home of fashion. Alison was first in but said Rome. Hazel was right behind her and says Milan. Seven microseconds later, so Hazel is on the wheel. Now, Hazel and Alison are both noodle doodles, so they've got their, their full broadband operational tonight, beating the competition. Nice work. I always thought it were from uh, Gatehouse of Fleet. Anyway. Like Dolce & Gabbana, you know. Right, who's who did the album? It's Nirvana. Nirvana. Two points for Nirvana. Who's, to, well, I'm not asking you who she is. I'm just asking for her nationality. She is uh, Spanish. She was from Spain. Spain or Spanish for the points there. Aye, well done, Hazel. Arancha Sanchez Vicario is her name. So, uh, two points for Spain or Spanish. <laughs> and this thing uh, is a real animal, ladies and gentlemen. Never mind, there's uh, not a consolation for Marion. That's the name of the, the Nirvana record. But I'm gonna, I am gonna ask one more trivia question. Maybe that's what you were anticipating there. But I'm gonna ask: uh, Does anyone know what this uh, little thing is called? Uh, see, that's another one trying to anticipate. That's Raymond trying to anticipate the question. But um, for a space on the wheel, what is this little animal called? <laughs> and uh, I just realised I'm not entirely sure if I know the answer to this. I think I do. Bush baby. No. It's not a bush baby. It's um, also... It's called the greater something. This is a, a little one, right? Uh, a baby. <laughs> floofer. <laughs> no, it's not a floofer. Floofer. Oh, dude, you're so floofer. Should be called a floofer. But it's not It's not a flying fox. It's called a greater something. And the something is uh, something to do with flying. <laughs> Fappy floof. It's not a wombat. It's not a kinkajou. It's, it's a great. It's not a tom. Gremlin. No. Tree rat. Come on, Roddy. It's not a... Look at you, the baby. It's called a greater something. And the something is uh, something to do with flying. Greater glider is correct. There we go. Maz gets it. Fantastic. Maz, you're on the wheel. Maz Elizabeth. There we are. I'm typing your name. You're on. Yeah, Glad Eye. Louisa's just behind. Nearly got it. But it's uh, Maz. You've got Greater Glider. Good work. Nice stuff. No, they're very, very similar. Simon, but that's not true. That's not what it's called. Greater big eared mouse tree bat fluffy thing. It's just any excuse to keep that on the screen a little bit longer. What a picture. Right, okay. NBC, Dolce Cabana, Nirvana, Spanish, and uh, real. Uh sound round, right? I've got a straightforward music round for you tonight. Uh an old fashioned straight down the line. Dr. Paul music round. Um, yes, and I think I do have it ready. Just going to go over here first and turn the volume up so that when I play it, you can hear it. Get to the folder. Get the thing right. There we are. We're all set up. So I'll show you the possible answers. All the answers that you need for this music round are there in front of you. Bruno Mars, Foreigner, Jerry the Pacemakers, KRS1, LL Cool J, Massive Attack, Radiohead, <clears throat> Sean Mendes, uh, The Hollies, and Toto. 
So there's five correct answers because there's five bits of music and you've just got to pick the five correct answers. Here is tonight's music round. You, my lover, move on. You watch me bleed until I can't breathe. Shaking, falling onto my knees. And now that I'm without your kisses. Come to wake up everybody. Boom, that original rap. Boom, that boom, that. God, what was I doing? Picking number four. That was absolutely horrible. Uh, number four. The others were pretty nice. Uh, but does anyone need to hear it again? Or, you know, I always play it twice, but I never really ask these days. Do, do you get it first time? Because if you do get it first time, it saves a few minutes. Uh, tell me, don't just say yes or no, just say, tell me if you want to hear it again or tell me if you're ready, okay? If you want to hear it again, I'll play it again. If not, I'll just, uh, I'll just let you get some answers and we'll, we'll get the answers pretty soon. Right, now I remember why I don't ask, because it takes a few seconds for your things to come through. One person says, yes, I end up playing it again, so I might as well just play it straight away. Right, this, that's why I play it again. I'm going to play it one more time, all right? You, my lover, move on. You watch me bleed until I can't breathe. Shaking, falling onto my knees. And now that I'm without your kisses. Boom, 
So I kind of, I kind of skipped on number four there, and I see Chris saying that uh, number four is the one I needed to hear again. No, it wasn't. No, I think I think our collective mental health trumps your quiz problems. Really? Ah, <laughs> it's shit. Right. Oh well, maybe not. Am I the only one that likes that track? No. Well, it seems that it seems that my finger's off the pulse for this one. Graham S likes number four as well. Veronica likes it. Everybody likes it except for me. There we go. And Don. I noticed that Don didn't like it. Right. Here we go. Here come the answers. Two points for a correct answer uh, in this round. Uh, Sean Mendes was the first one. Two points for Sean Mendes. Kind of modern guy. I think he's Canadian. Uh, number two, the Hollies. The Hollies. From a long time ago. Number three, Foreigner. Been waiting for a girl like you. Classic, soft rock, 80s, right down the line. Superpowers. All right, Foreigner. <laughs> they're, all, they're all just taking the piss, says Mum. There's no way that human beings could like that song. Uh, the song which split you right down the middle. I mean, that's what good art does, doesn't it? But it's uh, by Radiohead. What's that guy's name again? The Radiohead guy? Thom Yohork. And um, the last one, a bit of hip-hop from, I think from the 80s, maybe the 90s, uh, KRS-One. KRS-One. Boom, bap, original rap. No offence to anyone here, but if you're judging whether you're on the pulse, I'm not sure we are the best yardstick. I'm proudly off the pulse. I've not really been playing that catch up to game for many years. Like through my thirties, I was trying to keep up with uh, modern music, so I could not look like an old man at a quiz. But now I've just accepted I'm an old man. You know, so it's all right. I still know some modern music when I put uh, music rounds together, but mainly it's old stuff. You know, right? Uh, what we got? Ten. Ten. Ten, ten, six, ten, eight, six. Posh emo kids music, yeah. Radiohead's album, uh, OK Computer, 1997. I had that, I bought that. Maybe, I, I don't know, six months after it came out or something like that. I really liked it. I listened to it non-stop for a while and then never ever ever listened to it again it was a strange thing really liked it for a while and then <laughs> never never heard it again it was a bit a bit more sort of straightforward pop music than uh than that whatever that was i'm not even quite sure what the song that is oh yeah um i've got a trivia question to get you on the wheel Uh, Jerry and the Pacemakers are on the, the board there yeah but we didn't use them name any one of their number one singles they had three number one singles oh you did get it wrong but not one you'd heard yeah I don't know it depends it's alright it's, I think it is Kid A that's which album it's on anyway the question is Name a number one hit by uh, Jerry and the Pacemakers. Uh, Moyer's coming with Ferry Cross the Mersey. That was not number one. Uh, You'll Never Walk Alone is correct. Yes, uh, October 1963. You'll Never Walk Alone. Rogers and Hammerstein song. So uh, who was first there? It was... Woods, he went for Ferry Cross the Mersey. That's not right. Um, I'll double check that in a second. I think it was Marion first to say you'll never walk alone. Let's just uh, have a look at Ferry Cross the Mersey because obviously that's a famous song by them, but did it get to number one? It's uh, no, it got to number eight. So there are three songs that got to number one was How Do You Do It? 
How do you do what you do to me? Uh, I like it. I like it. I like it. And you'll never walk alone. All in 1963 after that had hits, but no number one. No number one. So uh, pretty sure Marion was the first to get that right. So Marion goes on the wheel of names and is a potential prize winner tonight. Okay. From the musical Carousel, that's right, yeah. How do you do what you do to me? I wish I knew. Great stuff. Bend me, shape me. Is that um? Is that them? Is that someone else? I don't know the Searchers or something like that. Bend me, shape. This is like turned into Ken Bruce Popmaster. Uh. Oh, someone completely different going to this. Bend me, shape me, anyway. Right, come on, let's go on with a quiz. Oh, I see. Hang on a second. Right, hang on. Hi. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ferry, but it's under ferry aid. Katie, that, that's a good argument, right? That's a good argument. Let's just go back to this. Let's just double check ferry across the mountains. He didn't go to number one at some other point. Uh, right, Ferry Cross America, 1964, number eight. That's in there, discography. Sorry, I know I'm getting distracted by this, but I just want to see. Charity record for Hillsborough Disaster Fund. Got to number one. Look, tell you what, whoever said uh, Ferry Cross America first, I'll put them on a wheel as well. Keep Marion on the wheel. Because that was the right answer I was looking for. But, yes, it did go to number one, but as a charity single. So, Moira, you were first, and I'll put you on the wheel as well. Okay? That sounds fair enough. Right, let's get let's get on, because we wasted a wee bit of time on that one. Not wasted, but, you know, I get finished at the right time. Amen corner. Bend it, shape it. Right, okay. Time for an anagram. You get 60 seconds to solve the anagram. Don't shout out the answer in the chat for this one. Um, just try and solve it. You get 60 seconds to solve it. Tell me if you're ready, but uh, don't shout it out in the chat. 60 seconds to solve the anagram. And you're looking for a sports team tonight. There goes the timer. Repairing Satanism. You know what? I'm going to put Katie Hasty on the wheel as well because uh, she made the argument that allowed... Moira, get on the wheel. So I think Katie deserves to be on the wheel as well. I'd like to try and get his quite a few names on the wheel. Anyway, uh, unscramble these letters. Repairing Satanism. Take all those letters, unscramble them, put them back together. Give us the name of a sports team. Quite a famous sports team. Not one that's based in Britain. One that's uh, based abroad. Mr Doyle has it already. Mr Doyle is reclining in his seat. Sparking up a doobie, maybe wiring into that leap through milk. Karen's ready. That's nice. Moira saying thank you to Katie for making the argument that got her on the wheel. Yeah, it's a it's a good argument. It's not something I thought of. Okay, so time's up. There's not too many if you saying you've got it, so it might be a difficult one. Kirsten's just got it there. It's uh, for three points, if you got it right, it's Paris Saint-Germain, football team, all right, based in Paris. Paris Saint-Germain. So if you got that right, you add three points onto your score. Where do all these scores go? I'm going to get you to upload your scores at the end. I'm going to do three league tables worth later tonight, okay? Because I missed Monday and Wednesday, because it's been the busiest week I've had for a long, long time. Hey, Lumpy Gravy got it. Fabian's got it. Nice one. Okay, let's move on. Uh, mystery bag. I don't have a mystery bag ready. I'm not going to do that just now, but I do have Where Am I? Uh, so let's do a Where Am I? Just now. Take me a few seconds. Ah, it is difficult, isn't it? Yeah, difficult, says Veronica. Maz says, saw giants and then uh, kind of got stuck on that. That's what can happen. Sometimes. 
Uh, I've got a nice uh, where am I for you. I'm just going to set up right now. Uh, I want to go in the wheel of names window. Start a new tab. Put it in. Off the labels. Okay, right. Oh, how where am I uh, is played. I'm going to show you some street view from around the world. And you've got to tell me uh, where I am. So I'll stop that screen just now. Get this screen on. And I want the name of the city. All right. Name of the city where we are today. Where are we today? Uh, what's going on? First person in the chat to get this right will get their name on the wheel. It's not the Spartans. Did we shout it out? Yeah, for, first to put it in the chat gets it right. Gets the gets on the wheel. Let, let's go down here. It says no entry. Let's be radical and go down here. Not many people about, is there? What's going on? I think t the centre of town's this way. Plaza Centrale for rent. Uh, right, Auckland, Paris, Sydney, Mexico, Guatemala, Texas, Mexico City. None of these are correct so far. Uh, they're selling chicken there. Chicken! Nice paint job on the outside there. San Jose, Lima, New Orleans, Albuquerque, no. Cuba, no. Miami, no. Uh, there's some more people about. Still pretty quiet, though. It's just first thing in the morning. There's some people just going about their business, carrying things. Uh, Cancun, New Mexico, Monterrey, San Salvador, Belize, Santiago, Caracas, no. I think if I go here and look around a bit, I think there's a bit of a clue back here. See this building with the. There's a, quite a good clue there. Uh, Tasco, Rio, Albuquerque. Oh, I've got to go up a bit to see your answers. Cancun, Santiago, Belize, Buenos Aires. I'm reading your answers. These are the ones I've seen. Okay. Tabasco, Cusco, Albuquerque, San Jose, San Salvador, Tijuana, Santiago, Tijuana, Rio, Bogota, Belize. San Jose. San Jose is like a, a better guess. Barbados is a good guess, but I am looking for the name of a city, not a country. So what's the name of this place? What's the name of the city? Some of you have got the right thing, but the wrong thing, if you know what I mean. That's it. Fat boy got six. Got it. It's uh, Bridgetown. Bridgetown Barbados is correct. And I've just seen. I just saw the comment and I've lost it again. So stop typing things, folks. It's Fat Boy got six. Got that right. I think it's a purple one. Yeah, there it is. Bridgetown Barbados. That's the Barbadian flag there. The flag of Barbados, and they've obviously done the whole shop out in. National colours and down the side of the alley here. This is the city centre. That's Bridgetown city centre. I'm sure we looked at it before. It was busier. There was more people about, but uh, kind of quiet today. Or whenever that was taken. Everyone's just strolling about. There's a sort of eight or nine storey building. Maybe that's as high as it goes. Looks pretty easy going. Maybe move there. If the internet's all right, I mean, I, you know, now that I don't do the pubs, I don't have to be here in Edinburgh. I can move to Barbados, do the quiz from there. Yeah, that's why I focused on it, right? Fat boy got sick. Well done. You're on. The, you're on the wheel. Okay, so fat boy got sick. You are on the wheel of names, along with Katie Moira, Marion, Maz, Hazel, Bill, and Allison. Right. Let's get back to uh, the quiz, the main quiz. If you know what I mean. Ladies and gentlemen, there I am. Right, uh, Hangman, am I going to do this just now? Yeah, I'll do this just now. It's here, so I might as well do it. Right, I think I'd planned to do Hangman at this point, but we've ended up doing, uh, you know, come back to this. Let's do the Blanco round first, right? I know that, Bridgeton. 
This is like the Bridgeton that doesn't have the orange walks. Okay, there's two Bridgetons. Now it's the one with without the walks. Okay. Blanco. Ha! The doors. Do you remember the doors? Here is, uh, this is a strange one. Normally it's five points in Blanco. I've gone for seven here. So you've got to uh, find seven words. Now nah, we're not doing um, Hangman. Might come back to that later, but uh, let's do this just now. So no shouting out here. You're just going to work this out, okay, and tell me when you're ready. So uh, an album called The Best of the Doors came out in 1985. 18 tracks. I've removed the words. One word from seven different songs, and you've just got to try and write down what you think the seven are. So there's uh, 14 points here. Slightly different to normal. Two points for each right answer. And just tell me when you're ready. You know? I think while you're thinking about that, I'm going to go and get some uh, background music back on. Get my volume down. So I see mum saying absolutely no idea. A couple of you are ready. I'm just saying I've uh, got a lot of suggestions for number four. People are... Uh, if you've got no idea, you know a good thing to do is to say them out loud. If you say them out loud, kind of can uh, automatically suggest answers to yourself. Light my something by the doors. The crystal something by the doors. People are something. Spanish something. LA something. It's going to have to do. Something me. <laughs> I'm 15 and uh, the unknown something. So you, even if you don't know the doors or you don't know their songs, uh, worth a couple of guesses. Difficult. Yeah, difficult if you don't know him. You know the doors. Jim Morrison. 60s and 70s. He died. He was young. One of those 27-year-old types. Ready but not ready. Ready, ready. Okay. I think it's coming to the point where I'm going to move on and show you the answers. So score yourself two points for each of these. Uh, a couple of seconds left. Right, okay. Let's time up. Let's get on to the answers. Okay, so number two there on the list for two points is come on, baby, light my fire. Light my fire. It wasn't going to be my fag, was it? Light my joint. Uh, Robin says, how are we scoring this round? Yes, two points per correct answer. So there's 14 points maximum in this round. So it could be a big swing in the scores. Uh, the Crystal Ship. You know this one. I've done this on Kazula Palooza. People are strange when you're a stranger. Faces look ugly right from the start. People are strange. Uh, number nine is Spanish Caravan. <laughs> Spanish Caravan for sale. £17,000. Includes pitch. Number 13 is LA Woman. Used to put it on playing pool because on the jukebox because it was the most value for money. This is the early 90s. You put 10p in and you get a song. Or you put it in. LA Woman's like seven minutes long. 
Touch Me. That's number 15. Uh, number 17 on that list is The Unknown Soldier. I see quite a lot of people saying uh, no idea for this one, so I want, uh, might be quite a low scores. Scored two points for each one, so Fire Ship, Strange, Caravan, Woman, Touch and Soldier. Maybe I should have given you some first letters there. I was trying to balance it between very well-known ones like Light My Fire, LA Women and People Are Strange with some slightly more obscure ones, but I guess maybe some people don't know the doors and therefore the whole thing's obscure. Not for Karen, though. Karen has nailed a lot of them. 14 points! And Jerry as well. 14 points! <laughs> Crystal meth. No. Spanish galleon. Funny, I was, I was thinking Spanish galleon. Even though I knew it was Spanish caravan. I was waiting for you to get your answers. I was thinking Spanish galleon. Even though I knew it. Marion's got them all right. Nice one. Nearly all of them for Chris. I like Freebird by Leonard Skinner, but but good. I don't like Freebird. Does my nothing. But LA Women's grooving. Four for Spaghetti Haggis. They just picked up the two. Right, this this is going to be a round that uh, splits the scores all over the place. I do like the door eye, but it's been a while. Well, I think it was 1972 he died. Couple of lucky guesses in there. That's the game. That's okay. That's what I'm kind of hoping for in the Blanco rounds is that you can, uh, it is possible to do lucky guesses. The only thing I know about doors is where Jim Morrison is buried. Yes, I've visited this very grave actually. Uh, can anyone name that cemetery? Name the cemetery that includes uh, the mortal remains of Jim Morrison. Not the city. I want the name of the cemetery. First person to put that in the chat will get themselves on the wheel. Pearl of Chez, that's right. Um, GPS is actually first to say that. Maz was just behind. I saw Mazzy's first, but his GPS uh, was to get that. Yeah, Père Lachaise Cemetery uh, in the suburbs of Paris. I went there in 1998 and did a piece for the radio, actually, just about the graveyard. Uh, so GPS... Other people that are buried there include uh, Chopin, the piano genius, Edith Piaf, singer, and uh, Oscar Wilde. Yeah, uh, Pearl of Chez. All right, okay, let's move on. That was a... Uh, people are strange. That was a strange little detail. There he is. Look, oh, I've just come back from the dead. Here I am. There he is, peeking up from his grave. 50-50 round. Right, it's four minutes to eight. I'm running behind. I think I've been quite chatty tonight. I'll shut up. Get on with the quiz. 50-50 round. Choose the right answer. Here we go. Uh, war. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Say it again. Which 19th century war included the Battle of Shiloh, in which more than 3,000 soldiers died? Uh, was the Battle of Shiloh in the Boer War or the US Civil War? Not that graveyard, not Le Dead Silibs. Le Dead Silibs. Battle of Shiloh, 3,000 dead, Boer War or US Civil War? Number two. Which of these is a more common surname in Scotland? Official figures from 2017 tell us this. Is it black or green? One is a lot more common than the other. Which uh, is the more common surname? Black or green in Scotland. Number three. 
bit of literature for your books, which is the easy way of saying literature. So which 17th century book by John Bunyan describes a journey to the celestial city on top of Mount Zion? Is that called Paradise Regained or The Pilgrim's Progress? 17th century, John Bunyan, Journey to the Celestial City. Is that Paradise Regained or The Pilgrim's Progress? It's question number three, 50-50 round. You just got to pick the right answer. Number four, Walter Hunt got the patent for a modern safety pin, but when did he get that patent? Was it the 17th century or the 19th century? So it's about inventions. When did Walter Hunt get the patent for the safety pin, the modern safety pin? Types of safety pins have been around since the Romans, but uh, modern patent, when was that? 17th or 19th century? And the last one here is about the Navy. In the Navy. Which is the higher rank in the Royal Navy out of petty officer or sub-lieutenant? They both sound a bit kind of low, <laughs> petty officer or sub-lieutenant. Which one is higher? Which is, uh, who gets to go on top? If there's a Royal Navy clusterfuck. So, uh, let me see. Uh, number one, uh, I'm just going to replay these questions for you. Battle of Shallow, Boer War or US Civil War? Tell me when you're ready. Hi, uh, more common surname in Scotland, black or green? John Bunyan, 17th century, Celestial City. Is that Paradise Regained or The Pilgrim's Progress? Uh, Walter Hunt's safety pin patent, when did that come along? 17th century or 19th century? It's a higher rank in the Royal Navy, Petty Officer or Sub-Lieutenant. That's the five questions. You tell me when you're ready. I'll give you the answers and then it'll be time for the last round. After the last round, I'll get you to upload your scores. Uh, so I can make league table. I've got th after tonight. I've got three league tables to catch up on. I'll I promise I'm going to do them tonight. Okay, I will not go to bed until they're done. And uh, then we'll play a few more games for names. Then we're going to spin the wheel for some prizes coming up. Oh yes. Was the safety pin made out of wood? No, it wasn't. Made of metal. Metal. Modern safety pin. Pretty much recognisable as a modern safety pin. Ready! I take it as a John Anderson voice you're doing there in that comment, Don. And not a ready! Like Mike Reed Razmataz. Not Razmataz. Um, run around. But I think it's a John Anderson out of Gladiators. I think that's what you're doing. Right, everyone's ready. Let's do it. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Uh, Battle of Shiloh, 3,000 dead. That's the US Civil War. Uh, there they are. Basically shooting at each other from about 10 yards apart. Hard work. It makes being an internet quiz master look easy. Compared to having to shoot at people and be shot at from 10 yards away. Uh, most co more common surname in Scotland is Black. Black. Black is about 50th most common in Scotland. Green's about 100th. Something like that. More or less. Uh, para um, hang on. I was about to tell you the wrong answer. The right answer for this is Pilgrim's Progress. Pilgrim's Progress. John Bunyan. Walter Hunt got the safety pin patent in the 19th century. Did you get that one? Look, there's the date. April 10, 1849. Recognisable as the modern safety pin. I don't know if he made a lot of money out of it. So sometimes they don't. And um, the higher rank out of the petty or the sub, who's who's the best out of those two? Remember, I was asking you for who was higher up. Uh, the correct answer is your sub-lieutenant. Okay. Here's a, an infographic. So the uh, up here, that's the sub lieutenant. That's in the, the officers, the lowest of the officers. And then this is uh, that's a petty officer there. They're like sort of not really officers. I don't know how military stuff works, but uh, there you go. 
sub lieutenant is slightly higher. Okay, that's the round. Ten for Ms. Duff. I am Smartcus out in front again. Ten out of ten. Jonathan Bill, eight out of ten. Janie got ten. Keith got eight. That's the chameleons. Peaky Pfeiffer is nailing a good 10 out of 10 for that one. Noodle Doodle's got 10. Uh, Team Clint. Got 10 out of 10. Love the gravy, 10 out of 10. 10 for the fists. Lots of good. 10 after serious debate. Which ones were you unsure about? Blue on Bunyan and the sub. Yeah, they both sound like they're no big deal. But the sub lieutenant is a bigger deal. Big air. <laughs> cool. That's the pin thing. Aye, aye, aye. I mean, patents. I don't think they were really doing patents back in the 17th century. You know what I mean? I think it's the whole patent thing is a more modern thing than that. I think. Don't quote me on that. Must go and read about it. Anyway, double or bust. Here we are. We're at the last round. Uh, right, quick. Quick trivia question to get you on the wheel before we do the last round. What state was the Battle of Shiloh fought in? Again, I'm going to quickly look this up. I think I know the answer. I'm just going to go and check. 3,000 dead at the Battle of Shiloh. Which state was that fought in? First one to put it in the chat will get their name on the wheel. Shiloh's another um, Neil Diamond song, actually, but I don't know if that's what he was singing about. Well, I'm not sure about that, Tate. I think it would still be described as American, even though it would be British territories, you know. Yes, we have a right answer for this question I'm asking. The right answer is... Uh, has been picked by Louisa. Tennessee is correct. So fantastic. Well done, Louisa. Oh, you know what? Maz got it first. I'll put you both on. Okay. I don't like to take people off once I've actually typed them in. Bit rude. So, Maz. You're on the wheel for the second time tonight, and Louisa, you're on the wheel. Uh, thanks for that small mistake, right? But here we go. Let's... Hell of a state, by the way. <laughs> Let's do double or bust. You know how this works. Four points for a correct answer. So if you get them all right, you get 20 points. But there's a risk of going bust. If you put one wrong answer in this round, you get zero for the round. That's bust. <laughs> Not like it. So to avoid going bust, you can leave blanks. You don't have to answer every question. You understand? I'm sure you do. Here we go. Here come the questions. This is the last round of the main part of the quiz. So your score after this will be your final score. Right. In which Brothers Grimm fairy tale does a miller falsely claim that his daughter can spin straw into gold? What is the name of that story? Title of the story. It's a fairy tale collected by the Brothers Grimm. They never wrote them, but they collected them. And a miller makes a false claim to a king that his daughter can spin straw into gold. What is the name of that fairy tale? Okay, number two um, is about writers. Who wrote the 1998 novel about a boy? Ended up becoming a movie starring Hugh Grant. Huge Grant in 2002. About a boy who wrote the original book in 1998. Uh, number three, Ashes to Ashes. Born and died in the same building, right? King Edward VII of the United Kingdom was born in and died in the same building. Now, which building was that? That's question number three. Number four, in this double or bus round, remember... You can leave blanks in the shrink. It's about choosing which ones you're going to answer. Ice hockey, right. Okay, a regulation ice hockey game consists of how many periods of how many minutes? And to get the points here, you have to get both parts. You have to say how many periods there are, and you have to say how many minutes there are in each period. The 
periods are all the same length, in case you're wondering that. So how many periods of how many minutes is ice hockey? That's the second last question. Here is the final question for the main part of the quiz. Tonight, uh, it's a year. To get the points, you have to get within 10 years of the right answer. Can you get close enough? The Hobbit, when was it first published? Plus or minus 10 years. So if you're 10 years out, you're fine. You get the points. If you're 11 years out, you're bust. That's wrong. So you decide which of these five you're going to answer and then tell me that you're ready. I'm going to replay the questions in just a second. But right now, I'm just going to remind you that I am doing this for tips. I'm trying to feed my family, maybe even buy my daughter a Christmas present. It's tight, you know. So I'm hoping that you're entertained enough to think to yourself, "Whoa, this quiz is quite good." Maybe give the boy a tip. But if you're feeling that way, then I'm very grateful. And uh, I'm just going to post my link in here to the donation. The link, if you look, if you can't find the link later on, it's always in the description underneath. And someone was saying, Scott from the pedestrians, I think, was saying. Um, I should put that link on the Facebook page. I should. I've still not got around to that. So thank you to folk who have donated and who do donate, and I really appreciate it. It's just about keeping things together. I hope we get this COVID out of the way in a couple of months. Get back to earning. Mr. Doyle's only going for four. Marion is ready. The Duff is going boss out. That means answering all five. Louisa's ready. Bill's going boss out. You can only make that claim if you're going for all five. That's what we like to see. Boss out despite not being sure. Nice. Only going for two. Playing at KG. Yeah, it might work out. Sometimes it works out that way. Sometimes it's the better tactic. Uh, there's not too many if you said you're ready. I'm going to wait for a couple more moments just to see uh, some more people saying that you're ready. I think we're ready. I'm going to show you the answers now. Okay. So, if you haven't yet made up your mind, then make up your mind right now because here come uh, the answers. Oh, no, did I? I haven't replayed these, have I? No, oh, let's see these again. No one's asking for any. Quick reminder, right? Brothers Grimm. Daughter spins straw into gold. What's the story? Who wrote about a boy? King Edward VII, born and died, same building. Name the building. Ice hockey periods. How many and of how many minutes? Have to get both those bits right. And uh, first year of publication for The Hobbit. Okay, there's a few more readies now. That's good. Thank you very much, Titty Biscuits. Appreciate it. Thank you. Love your work. Right, double or bust answers. Here we go. Right, Brothers Grimm fairy tale. The Miller spins, uh, says, well, he spins a lie that his daughter can spin straw into gold. Name it a story. Uh, this is not very easy, I don't think. Uh, it's Rumpelstiltskin. Did you get it? You okay? Let us know if you get bust. Tell us which one you get bust on if you do get bust. Uh, number oh, there it there he is. It's a long story. Basically, she ends up having to guess his name in order not to lose her baby. It's pretty brutal, but she gets it right. It's like it's, it's a story about a quiz. In fact, she has to guess Rumpelstiltskin's name, and she does. Uh, Hugh Grant. Started about a boy who wrote the book. It was Nick Hornby. That is the face of Nick Hornby. Nick Hornby. Uh, Edward the Seventh, born and died in the same building, which was not the Eastern General Hospital in Seafield, but it was uh, Buckingham Palace. Buckingham Palace. Buckingham Palace. So he didn't really get very far, did he? Ultimately. That was uh, after Victoria. Yeah. Before George V. I think he was a bit of a boozer. 
a regulation ice hockey game, right? This is difficult. I don't think I would have got this right. It's three periods of 20 minutes each. So it's an hour. But it's split into three periods. 20 minutes each. So if you've got anything that isn't three and 20, then you're bust. Of course, if you left it blank, nothing bad happens. And the last one. Oh, yeah, The Hobbit. Uh, some of you will know this. Some of you might have guessed it. Maybe some of you just left it alone. The correct answer, the exact right answer is 1937. So if you got between 27 and 47, you got the points. Bat Boy got sick. It is bust. What did you get bust on? Let us know. Tell us what, what, uh, what derailed you. Same for the uh, Peaky Fifers. Uh, both those players are on the wheel, though. Fat Boy got sick and JPS are both on the wheel, so that's uh, some compensation for getting busted. Noodle Doodles are bust as well. What did you get bust on? Tell us what you got bust on. It's always interesting to know what it was that caught people out. Um, that is an original 1937 The Hobbit. Uncle Stiltskin, Nick Hornby, Buckingham Palace, three periods of 20 minutes each, 1937, so 27 to 47. Uh, the Parasite blew it for us. <laughs> what did you put there? Sixty-two. Here come the the total scores now. Sixty-two, fifty-five, sixty-seven, sixty-seven. Didn't get Rumpelstiltskin. What did you put? I know you tell me you got bust on various things, but I want to know what you put. I want to know uh, what you thinking was. Tolkien got you. Nah. Did you go later or earlier? I want to know what you put. A wise leave on question three. If some went for Windsor, right? Okay. Buckingham Palace. Yeah. That's a that's a nicely played sixteen. Yeah, I went to a nice hockey game in Pittsburgh, and it was um, I enjoyed it, but it was the, it was the fans really. I didn't really care about the ice hockey, but the fans were good. They were pretty wild. Was intact. Full house. Got the Hobbit spot on. Nice work. For the tape. Right, I'm about to show you the link to upload your scores. I invite you to upload your scores, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, it's quarter past eight, so I'm going to do some quick games for names. And uh, we can get some more names on the wheel, and then we can do some spinning for some prizes. It was a tough quiz this week, yeah. There was lots of difficulty in there tonight. Went earlier for Tolkien. Yeah. He was um, an English professor at Cambridge. I think he fought in the First World War. Graham Y says a suggestion. How about slightly more questions about Metallica? All right. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll do this one, Graham. I've got, I've got a Metallica question lined up. Funnily enough, uh, a music question. Some of you will know this because it's from the quiz the other night, but uh, who is... Uh, right, name both songs. This is a mix, Metallica and one other artist, but I want you to name both songs, right? First person who can put this in chat and get on the wheel. So uh, I've got I've got to turn it up. That's what I've got to do so you can hear it. Oh, it's only uh, twenty odd seconds long, so I'll just play it again. Stevie Wonder is correct. Master Puppets is correct. Superstitious. You know what I've got to do? Dedicated to 
shot gets the even the one good shot. It's the sound for the music for very well done. Yeah, I wish. That's right. That's correct. Uh, the song's called I Wish. By Stevie Wonder, it's mixed with Master of Puppets by Metallica. So Gary gets himself on the wheel for that one. Nice. I'll, I'll stop it now. I'm sure you've heard that. Right now. So, uh, Gary Palmer, nice one. Okay, I'll do some more uh, Metallica questions, maybe next quiz. Uh, I saw somebody asking, am I doing Christmas Day? Yes, I damn well am. Absolutely, totally. 3 p.m. on Christmas Day. I don't get that. Chaz and Dave did a song about a wham, a wham. Don't know. A nice one. Wishmaster. Uh, yeah, it's um, the artist. I'll tell you the name of the artist because some of these people who do remixes on Facebook are really good. That's Jay Cummerbund. Loads of great mixes. Go and look up DJ Cummerbund on YouTube. Loads of people make great, great mashups, and uh, I'm using them. It is Dot Paul versus the Queen, 3 p.m. on Christmas Day. Right, let's. Uh, I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Let's get some more games for names on the shoot. Let's see what we got. Have I got anything here? Yeah, I've got a Hangman. Let's play Hangman. Classic film. You know how this works. Put some letters in the chat, some letters off the alphabet. I'll do them in that order. And the first person who can solve the problem, the hangman problem, will get themselves on the wheel. You're welcome, Grim. Am I doing more quizzes before between Christmas and New Year? I'm definitely going to do Boxing Day. Uh, I'll do the Monday, Wednesday, Friday as usual. I'll probably do Hogman A as well, which is a Thursday. Right. We've got a G. We've got an E. No, it's not Pale Rider. That's a good guess. Uh, right. First three are G, E, R. Let's get those up. So is there a G? No, there is no G. Is there an E? There are two E's. Is there an R? No. Uh, Gary's gone for Roadhouse. Alan Finlay has gone for Home Alone. It's the right answer. Yes! Home Alone is correct. Huh. Or M Alone. Home Alone! Alan Finlay, you are on the wheel. Great going. Alan Finlay. There we go. I'm typing you in. Yeah, Home Alone is correct. Brilliant. Well done, Alan. Now, do I have another hangman right here? Uh, mystery bag. I don't think we've got... Do you want to do another Where Am I? I don't have a mystery bag set up. I'm not going to start scrabbling around here because it'll be rubbish. Uh, let's do another Where Am I? I'm just going to get another one set up for you. Make sure that I mark I've done Barbados. All right. Here's a good one. Good one. Although I reckon somebody would probably get it straight away. Just getting it loaded up right now. Classic, I don't think so, says Keith. Well, I mean, like, that's not my opinion. It's more kind of no, it's a classic. It's a Christmas classic. I mean, you ask people about Christmas movies and uh, 
they often mention Home Alone. It's a very popular movie. I think I've seen it once and I thought it was pretty good, okay. Not particularly my thing, but um, nah, I'm not apologising for that. It is a classic. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to get a couple set up, actually. A couple of Where Am I's, because I know you like them. This is a difficult one. I've got a fairly easy one and a quite difficult one. Right, so I'll do two. Getting uh, them set up here. Where Am I's coming up in just a second, Louisa. I'm just getting them set up. Uh, all with the labels off so that I don't immediately give away where it is. I still give it away sometimes by accidentally clicking on something, but right okay we're ready here we go i'm gonna be spinning the wheel in seven minutes by the way as soon as we hit half past eight so so what we're gonna do stop the screen uh share the screen go to chrome tab and get this open and first person to say where we are will get on the wheel right where are where are we now what's going on look there's the sky in fact you could just look at that probably get it from that What's going on? Where are we? Uh, it's not San Francisco. No. Yeah, what, what's that? A mixture of caravans and houses. Looks really depressing. A coddy. No, it's probably uh, even more depressing than a coddy. Darnes. No, but it's better. Oh, I've got a little bit of a, a halt. I don't know if you can still hear me or not. The computer's just momentarily slightly frozen. But it's going to be okay. It'll resolve itself. Um I don't know if I don't know if I disappeared there. It was like a, a bit of a freeze. Yes, we have a right answer. We have a correct answer. And it came pretty early because all your millions of comments come flying in. Uh, Orkney Air, Durness, Craggy Islands, Stornoway, Applecross, Kirkwall, Air, Portree, Isle, Aberdeen. John O'Groats! There's Graham Y. Yeah, first to get it right. It's John O'Groats. I think the... Uh, I think it's over here is the, the famous sort of... Yeah, look, there's the people. Look, haha, <laughs> we're at the end. Ha 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 ha. Uh, so Graham Y gets himself straight on a wheel of names. It's a Graham rather than a Graham. All right. Nice one, Graham. I think quite a lot of you got it straight after that. Graham also went for Land's End, just covering his bets. John O'Groat says. Kind of froze for a second there. You what? Oh, I see. Right. <laughs> Home alone. I thought you'd tell me it's about something that happened in Mull. Kevin didn't bother to phone the police. He just decided to try to kill everyone. Psychopath. Yeah, fair point. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's quite a bad kid. I think that's kind of the idea. Nice one, Graham. Right, okay. 26 minutes past. Got time for one more. Where am I? So I need to stop the screen for a second. Woohoo! Says Graham. And get the other one on. Share screen. Chrome tab. Then this tab. And then there. Right, where are we now? Name off the city, please. So I find it quite disturbing. Actually, the more time I spend on Street View is how often you find streets that have got nobody in them. We won a train ticket to Wick. Is that a true story? Did that happen? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, there's uh, so many photographs from... I've never been to John O'Groats, but... It looks like a hotel, I think, and it's like right out on its own. Quite distinctive. Right, where are we this time? What's the name of the city? Oh, look, suddenly it's a sunny day. Uh, let's go over here. This looks like we're on a bridge. Let's have a look over here. Uh, right, the guesses are coming in from you. Paris, Krakow, Budapest. No, no, no. 
Barcelona, Liège, Warsaw, Athens. I'm just hesitating because it's just jumped. I've got to go back up to where we are. Athens, Gdansk, Stuttgart, Ljubljana. Nice one. Very good, Andrew. It's Ljubljana, um, capital of Slovenia. Ljubljana. Oh, brilliant. You're on the wheel. Lots of different guesses from you. Prague, Seville, Bruges, Baz, Baal, or Basel, Sofia. But it's Ljubljana. Um, getting it that early, I would guess that you've maybe been there. Andrew, is that correct? Anyway, excellent catch. Yeah, it looks all right, doesn't it? Yeah, you're right, Graham. It does look nice. Let's have a have another little look around just for a minute because I don't really think I've got time to uh, do anything else. It looks very peaceful. Some young people cutting about. Let's see if we can find the pub. 29 minutes past. Let's see if I can find the pub. Give me directions. Sophie nailed that one. Uh, it's Andrew with Sophie at that end. Uh, educate guests based on cycling fandom. Really? Nice one. Really? Oh, I see. Are you a fan of um, the Slovenian cyclists? Were they not successful in the Tour de France this year? I don't really follow that anymore. Right, let's, can I find the pub? This is the game, right? Down here. There must be a pub down here somewhere. Looks like everything's shut. It's first thing in the morning. Oh, hang on. No, it's a bike park. Let's go along here. Must be a pub in the corner. No. Oh, hang on. Is that a boozer? No, it's a clothes shop. Don't want a clothes shop. There's a town square. That look, it must be a boozer. Where's the boozer? There's the pub. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. You get a drink there. There we go. Just hitting the pub at half past eight. So I got there in time. Right, it's time to spin that wheel, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to uh, get spinny for the winnie. You know what I mean? So we get the wheel of names up here. And we find a lot of people on the wheel, which is good news. So, uh, let's go up here. Here's the wheel itself. That was me typing the names underneath. And then we have the wheel. I'm just going to stretch this window a little bit, which means that we can see the uh, the whole of the wheel. You saw the whole of the wheel. Right. Prizes. You remember I told you earlier on about the prizes. Um, first prize tonight is a packet of... Bodgers. This is uh, Scotland's favourite and most foul-mouthed fridge poetry. Bodgers. You want to buy some of this? Pretty cheap. Six pounds. You can get it at bodgers.com. You order now. Get them just in time for Christmas. Uh, but I'm going to spin the wheel. And remember, well, Libliana's on the wheel, right? I do do that sometimes, don't I? Thank you for spotting that. Yeah, I've typed Ljubljana instead of Andrew. Thank you for catching that. Marion? Okay. Right, here we go. I'm going to spin the wheel for a packet of Bodgers. Here we go. Remember, listen to the computer lady. See if she manages to read out the name properly. Let's check it out. Bodgers, Katie, Fat Boy, Maz, Gary, Alan... It's going to be Alan or Graham. Is it going to stop in Alan? Oh, where's the voice? Alan, like. Oh, it came in the end. Alan Finley. Alan Finley. Yay! You have won. Bodgers. Now, I don't think, I don't remember you being a winner before, Alan, which is good. It's good to get some new winners. So. If that's the case, send me your address so that I know where to post it. 
All right, send me an address on Facebook is usually the best thing. Uh, and well done. I'll take it off the wheel because you can be on the wheel lots of times, but you can only win one prize. Uh, well, we, we, we can still play that game afterwards. But let's just do it. Hey, nice one. Hi, right, send me a message with your address, Alan, so that I know where to post it. Right, okay, second prize tonight is um, 100,000 pounds, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it's a National Lottery scratch card to a potential value of 100,000 pounds, which is enough to buy six houses in Hoyk. Uh, so I'm going to spin the wheel, and whoever gets... Is that the first time you've been on the wheel? You're saying beginner's luck. Nice one. Well done. It's good to get new names on. I've got no problem at all with uh, people who've been here before winning because because I love you all. But it's great to get some new names on as well. All right. Let, let's spin a game for £100,000. £100,000. GPS Bill, Marion, Katie, Moira, Maz, Gary, Graham, Andrew, is a good ja. Lupliana. Andrew Burney. Andrew Burney. Made you sound a little bit Swiss or Swedish there. Nice work, Andrew. You've won £100,000. Now, I do have your address uh, from before, so no need to send me that. Great stuff. Well done. Okay, the final prize tonight comes from Sock Splash. Uh, Sock Splash are a brand new company. They are based in Edinburgh. They're a young team, a young team, not that type of young team, but a young team of uh, a guy called Matthew and a woman called Beth, boyfriend, girlfriend, and uh, pandemic came, they decided to start up a sock company. I'm going to show you the prize in just a minute, but it's uh, slightly tricky to do both at the same time in a moment, so I'm going to spin the wheel. This is for a pair of socks, all right, for uh, It's the seahorse one. It's the cool seahorse, right? So we're going to spin the wheel for the last time. And uh, we will find out who's winning the socks. Here we go for the time. Tonight. There's Marion, Kate, Gary, Louisa, JPS, Allison, Hazel, Bill, Maz, Marion. Is it going to Moira? Is it going to go all the way to Kate? It's going to hang on. Moira P. Moira P. Or Moira P. As the computer lady says, sock, 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 socks. It's good to chant. That sometimes does work, Maz, but not tonight uh, for you. Moira is the sock winner. And uh, Moira has been a winner before, so I'm pretty sure I have her address. So I'll send that off to the sock people, and they will send you the socks. Um, there's going to be more socks on Christmas Day, by the way. So well done to everybody. That was great. Right, let's see how this woman carries on with uh, Lupliana. Because, uh, let's see. Lupliana. Falkirk. Right, let's see if she can handle this. We'll spin the wheel, and we want to hear uh, what the computer lady's going to make of Lupliana. But give, give it a fighting chance to be Falkirk, you know. So, uh Ljubljana or Falkirk? <laughs> Falkirk, Ljubljana. It's going to be, right, listen out for her voice. See if she gets this right. Ljubljana. Oh, that is shocking. That's a disgrace. Who? Well done, the winners. Yeah, merry festive season. Listen, thanks for doing the quiz, everybody. I really appreciate you coming here. Um, I would appreciate a tip if any of you thought that was worth a tip. Tonight's quiz, quizzes in general. Um, <laughs> best quiz ever. Thank you, Spedge. That's me donation link. I just put it in there again. Couple of good. Don't be, uh, don't be thinking to yourself, oh, I don't want to insult him by only giving him a pound or two pound. That's fine, you know. They all count. So thank you very much uh, to those who have donated, and I, I genuinely appreciate it. It makes my heart sore every time I get one. Um, 
I'm really I'm hoping for a good Christmas day. I'll be completely honest. I'm hoping that uh, we get a few people in who haven't been before, and hopefully we can build the numbers up and get uh, get to another level as the new year goes on. I'm going to keep doing the quizzes. Like I said, I'm going to do Christmas Day. I've probably got a little uh, graphic for that. I'm definitely going to do Christmas Day. Merry Christmas festive thing to you, Gary, as well, with your lightsaber, your Christmas lightsaber there. Um, God, I still don't know when the pubs are going to come back. People are saying April, people are saying May, people are saying March, you know. It's frankly a bit uh, hard to listen to the news and all that because uh, it's just, it goes on and on and on. It'll come when it comes, you know. I hope you can still hear me. I've got another little freeze at this end. I've been asking the computer to do quite a lot today. I think it needs a wee break. Uh, but I will, even when the pubs are back on, I will continue to do online quizzes. I think this is, I think there is a future in this for me. But I've got, I've got you know, I need to work with a PR company to try and make this bigger. That's nice at the moment, you know, because we kind of know everybody now. Trying to get it to how they say another level. So I've got no idea if you can hear me or not. So I'm just going to keep talking. So Christmas Day, three o'clock, the Queen. You can watch her at three o'clock. She'll be going on television talking about how it's been a difficult year. You can imagine, you can pretty much picture the speech that she's going to make. Or you can come on YouTube and do the quiz. With me. Right, are you there? Are you there, folks? My uh, computer can't handle the truth at the moment. But as ever, if you just give it a minute, it, it comes good. Maybe, maybe if I get a really good Christmas day, I can get a new computer for Christmas. One kind of that's not from uh, the Iron Age. Mm hmm. You'll probably all be gone by the time I come back on because this is a bit, a bit of a freeze here. Let's close the PowerPoint. That might speed things up. Although that's exactly what I was going to share. So. Ooh la la, ooh la la la, ooh la la, ooh la la la.
yeah. What happened there is that I got an internet woman to pronounce Ljubljana and that crashed my computer. Can't handle it. And then the whole thing destroyed and then I came back and uh, here we are. Uh, so I nearly ran away and I thought, right, I kind of left that hanging so I'm just going to come back. Uh, have you decided if you're doing a later one on Christmas Day? Yes, I've decided and no, I'm not going to. I'm just... I'm only going to do one on Christmas Day, just the three o'clock one. The one I do on Boxing Day will be later. I'll do that in the evening on Boxing Day. Will you be doing the quizzes Monday, Wednesday? Yes. Yep. It's really, really boring if you do watch it. It's, nothing happens. All she does is say, oh... I mean, like, every year she says this, she always says, oh, it's been a difficult year. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen... I don't think I've ever seen a Queen's speech where she goes, by the way, that was fucking amazing! Did you see that? That was brilliant! I think for the last 30 years or so, well, it's been a difficult year. So God knows what she's going to pull out this year. I mean, all she can do is uh, pull more. But yeah, you're not missing anything. You really are not missing anything. Uh, yes, you are, Marion. No problem. <laughs> Your photograph, Maz, is uh, looking very glam. Let's have a look. It certainly is. Yeah. We better the old black and white. Fantastic. You were at a wedding. Ah, it's a good rendition. Nice one. Do, 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 do. So I think that's cleared up any loose ends. There weren't many loose ends there, but I thought I'd better come back and just uh, let you know what's what. Um, sheesh. I'm looking forward to seeing your scores tonight. I'm going to just... <laughs> I'm just going to... I'm going to put the link one last time for you to upload scores. All right. Just in case you missed that earlier on. Here we are. Oops. Done that without actually opening the thing. Uh... Wasn't she fist pumping the year Diana died? I, that was the last time that she was. Uh... I've obviously, got no idea what I'm doing. Where is she? I got her. Where's the queen? Where is she? She's not on here. That's why I was putting this back on to show you the picture of the queen. Anyway, she's gone. 
Right, I'm gone as well. It's um, nearly nine o'clock, so I'm going to say good night. Thanks for coming and doing the quiz, ladies and gentlemen, and I will see you soon. Next quiz is going to be Monday night, as per, and uh, we're going to have a, a busy, quizzy week. We'll see you next week.